Hello and welcome to this year's stewardship campaign, Saying Yes. Stewardship consultant Mark Ewert says that generosity can have many expressions including care, time, skill, intelligence, gifts, and money, and that one cannot omit any of these without curtailing them all. Financial generosity, he says, is one of the most challenging expressions, but perhaps holds the most opportunity to make a difference in the world and in our own well-being. Our team has been working this year to help us connect our money to our values to promote enhanced personal satisfaction. Satisfaction we will achieve, Mark says, when we transform ourselves from occasional haphazard donors to deliberate ambitious philanthropists. One model we've been looking at compares the stewardship outcomes of churches that operate from a spirit of scarcity versus those that operate from a spirit of abundance. More about that later. First, here's Elizabeth Lewis talking about talking about money, and then Rick Spitz with a summary of last year's giving profile. As a former treasurer of the church, I know we have a long history of avoiding open discussions about what money means for us as a church community. I remember lots of talk about paying the bills and balancing the budget, and none at all about our visions for the future of our programs and our church community. We are talking now about how we can each contribute to grow the church and the programs we envision. This is about money, and it is about more than money. Listen to church president, Dave Hudson. We are doing more, more together than ever before. I see new programs and new opportunities. I see new experiments in RE, in worship. I see more familiar faces and more newcomers than ever before. We are beginning to expect more of ourselves. Financial commitments are one of the things this church needs to fund its expectations, its operations, its programs. We cannot be bashful about talking about money, that we need to meet our dreams and aspirations. The hope is simply this, that we remember that financial contributions are part of the story, like time and passion. If we all give as we are able, there is nothing we cannot do. May our vision of things yet to be strengthen and inspire us as we consider our financial commitments to this beloved church community. Thanks to your generosity, we raised $290,000 last year. We had a number of very generous members, as well as a record number of people increasing their financial contributions. Many of you began working towards a goal of contributing 5% of your annual income. This slide shows the distribution of annual member financial commitments divided into four groups. In 2015, we received 166 pledges totaling $290,000. For our analysis, the total was ranked from highest to lowest pledge and was then divided into four groups of $72,500 each. Naturally, some members are able to give more than others. So an ideal profile looks like a set of steps over which members can advance over time. As financial ability, involvement, and commitment develops, members can move towards making more significant financial contributions. The groups range from Group 4, with a larger number of smaller dollar contributions, to Group 1, with a smaller number of bigger contributions. Many congregations have too few donors making larger financial commitments and too many making smaller ones. Sometimes this is a reflection of the membership just not being aware of the distribution of gifts or the vulnerabilities of over-dependence on a small number of donors, or leadership setting, setting too low an expectation of what it means to be a member. The UUA recommends that ideally each of these groups would be composed of a range, with 45% of families making the smaller pledges to 10% making the largest pledges. Last year, our church's distribution had groups ranging from 65% of member families making the smaller pledges to 5% making the biggest ones. Another way to look at last year's results is shown here. This slide shows the range of pledges in each of our groups. 
Last year, just 15% of our commitments, or 24 families, were responsible for half of the total, or about $145,000. This means we rely much more heavily on a few members making large pledge amounts. A more sustainable model is for at least 25% of member families to fund half of a church's budget, with 75% funding the other half. And finally, there are over 260 families listed in our church directory. 166 of them made an annual financial commitment last year. About 100 families in the directory did not participate in financially supporting the operations of our church this past year. The numbers tell us one story, but our attitudes about the numbers often tell another story altogether. One of the things I've noticed about this congregation is that when we talk about money, we start getting nervous. There's a sense that there is never enough, and we certainly couldn't ask our already hard-pressed members to give more. The problem with this scarcity mentality is that it also constricts our vision of what we could be as a congregation. I wonder what might happen if we looked at the numbers not with a spirit of scarcity, but with a spirit of abundance. What if we expanded our vision beyond the confines of simply keeping our institution going? What if we trusted that the resources to fund our vision were already here and all we need to do is ask? What if we began to challenge ourselves to dream more and to give more? The question we must ask ourselves is this. Given the choice between an uninspiring mode of maintenance or an inspiring mode of challenge and growth, into which kind of congregation would I prefer to invest my life and my resources? The goal of the 2016 Stewardship Campaign is to help our church family expand its vision from our current maintenance mode to a mode of abundance. If you've been a faithful contributor to our church, thank you. If you have attained the 5% of your annual income giving guideline, thank you again. If you have exceeded that goal, we especially thank you and congratulate you on helping the UUCN move to the future with an abundant spirit. If you have never made a financial commitment to the church, consider that this is the year you start. You don't have to begin at the 5% giving guideline. In fact, you may want to start by making a $100 donation during the stewardship campaign without making a year-long commitment. Good habits have to start somewhere. Let this be the year of challenging ourselves to dream more and to give more let this be the year of saying yes to abundance.